Hey everyone, in today's video I'm going to show you how to make this. Let's just jump right into it. Okay, so open up a new Blender scene um, and then you press A and then X and then delete everything from that. And then you're going to want to head to the link in the description below. Uh, that'll bring you to the Star Wars kind of font. It's free. You can't obviously use this commercially, um, but to practice, you can use this fine. It might also be a good thing if you wanted to use your own font and you put your own logo into this, you can kind of mimic it. You don't need to follow on exactly with the Star Wars thing. But once you've got this downloaded, it will download a zip file. You just want to unzip that to wherever kind of on your computer and you'll have the different fonts here. So with them downloaded, what you want to do is in Blender, if we press Shift A and add in a text, if you go up here to uh, edit mode and then if we type in Star Wars and then over here where it says the little A symbol and click that under font, we've got our regular font here. If you just browse to where you downloaded those fonts earlier, and then you can pick the Star Jedi font, and now you can see that we have uh, Star Wars. So I'm just going to press R, X, and 90, just to flip that up, um, just so it's facing forward. And then under Fill Mode here, we want Fill Mode None, and this is going to give us our outline. Okay, so with our text object selected, if we go up to Object, Convert to, and then Mesh, that's now changed our object to just a normal mesh, and we've just got a load of vertices. Um, from here, if we go into edit mode, we can select these vertices here that we don't want and then press M and then do uh, at center. And you want to do this here as well. Um, and then also down here. So select those two, press M at center. And then if we go up to edge mode and then select these two edges and press X and then we can uh, delete those edges. So if we just go back to object mode, go up to object, convert to curve. Now we have a curve um, that we can add some geometry to. So if you come over to the geometry tab here and click uh, expand that down, and then we just want to give it a bit of depth. Um, and that's just going to get us our kind of outlined font. So that's the text bit done. Now, if we drag open a new window here and go into the shader editor and then press N to get rid of this side panel, we just want to give this a new material. Um, I'm going to keep it with the principled BSDF and I'm going to make it metallic and bring the roughness down to sort of 0 0.2. And then if we press Shift A and then search for a mix RGB node, and then what we can do is we can plug this color from the mix node into the base color here and then get our color here. Where we'll leave this top one to be the kind of gray white and then for color two, we want to pick like a nice golden sort of orange. And then with this factor, we're going to change it from silver to gold. Um, and the reason we'll keep it silver is so that we can see the color of our lights. So obviously with it gold, if we put a blue light on, it'll look green. Um, so we want to eliminate that by having like a neutral color at the start. And the way we're going to do that is by animating this uh, factor here. So let's just drag up our timeline. Now for this, I'm going to have a 24 uh, frames per second timeline. And I, I want it to be about eight seconds long. So I'm going to type in eight times 24. That'll give us enough frames to be an eight second long uh, clip, which is 192. Okay, with this node selected, um, you just want to go up to Edit Preferences. And then in the Preferences window under Animation, just make sure this default interpolation is linear instead of Bezier. Um, that'll just make everything look a lot better. Um, now, with this selected, we want to end at frame one here. If we go to Factor Zero and press I to insert a keyframe, and then if we go along to say 140, add in another keyframe, and then add 160, bump this to one, press I, add another keyframe. So now this is gonna be silver from uh, zero to 140 frames, and then it'll transition from the silver to the yellow, going like that golden color um, at 140 to 160 frames. And we can see that here. If we go over to rendered uh, material preview mode, you can see that the color there is changing and you can see the bar here going up. And that's kind of the effect that we want. Okay, so the next thing to do now that's set up is I'm actually gonna press one on the number pad and then just bring this over kind of to the middle of our scene. It just makes things like adding lights and stuff easier. And then I'm gonna come out of the shader editor because we're done there for now. And then I'm going to have this window as my uh, 3D view. And then here, I'm going to go over to rendered mode. 
I'm going to go over to the world tab and drop the strength. And then I'm going to get rid of the overlay by pressing this little button here. And then I'm going to press shift A, um, add in a camera, bring this camera back along that axis. And I'm just going to press Alt-R to get rid of any rotation on that because it seemed to be a bit rotated then. And then we can press RX90 just to bring it back up. And now we know this is dead center. Then on this window here, hovering over, I'm just going to press zero on the number pad. And that's just going to bring our camera view uh, as our main view here. And you can't see anything at the minute because there's no lights, um, which we will fix now. So with our camera back, I'm just going to press Shift A and add in a light area light. Bring this back on the Y by pressing G and Y and then press RX 90 again. And then I'm just going to scale this up on the X axis by pressing S and X. Oh, not that much. Bring that a bit closer to just to about there. And then I'm going to, in our camera mode here, I'm just going to um, center the text just so it's in the middle of our camera frame. And then just for now, with this light, I'm just going to drop this power to zero and we'll come back to that in a second. Um, and now we just want to add in a, another light and get a point light. Bring this back on the Y axis, bring it over on the X. And I'm going to increase the radius and then now I can choose like an interesting color. So I'm going to go for like a pink color and then from front view, I'm going to get my light and then press Shift D and just duplicate this three times. And kind of make like a bit of a strange triangle shape. And then each of these, I'm going to change to a different color. Um, and you can see the kind of effect that's having over here. I'm going to go for an orange, a blue, and then this pink, I'll make a bit more of a purple. And now still in front of you with our cursor in the center point of the world here, I'm just going to press Shift A and add in a empty and a circle. And I'm going to get this light, this light, and this light, and then finally pressing shift, select our empty at the end, and press control P to parent them, and then click parent, object, keep transform. So now what we're going to do is we're going to rotate this empty, and you can see that this makes our lights, you can see over here that this is what that's doing to our light source. I'm just going to bring this back on the Y slightly, just to there. Now we want it to fade up. So you could, what you could do is you could animate the intensity of these uh, lights here, which is what I'm going to do. Or you could just have this down here and then animate it and bring it up. Um, but it's probably easier to. So we go through to 12 frames, which is half a second, and then just keyframe each of these lights at an intensity of 10. And then if we go back to frame zero, drag the intensity down to zero, and then press I again. That just sets a keyframe. Now you see that they fade in, um, which is what we want there. So on frame zero here, I'm going to press I uh, with the empty selected, press I and then rotation. And then I'm going to come to our last frame and then I'm going to type in uh, RY360 and then press I and then rotation. So now you can see that our lights are rotating here. If you want to, um, something else you could do instead of doing 360, you could do like 1080. So I'll make them rotate faster. Uh, I mean, this is up to you depending on how long you want it. So you want to get this looking kind of however you want it to look. And then, and then once you're happy with the speed, this is rotating. Uh, what we want to do is at around frame 140, just press I and keyframe these lights again at um, 10 watts. And then if we go forward to 155 and then get these back to zero, and that's just going to let these lights fade out. Because then what we want is at frame 140, when these are at full brightness, we want this, this light to be at uh, its lowest brightness. And then at frame 155, when these are fading out completely, we want our light here to be at its full brightness and press I. So now you see that the effect we've got is it fades in, the lights move around, then they dip and then it goes to the gold color that we all know and love. So the last thing to do is at, if we go to our last frame, 
We want to get the camera to where we want it to end up, which I think is kind of where it is now. So I'm going to press I and then location. And I'm going to go back to frame zero. Frame one, maybe. And I'm just going to press GY and just bring this back, you know, camera back slightly. Press I, location again. So you see that our camera moves in. We zoom into the logo. And as we do, the line changes to exactly how we want it. Now what we can do is we can add some bloom in. So if we get to like a nice bright part here, under bloom, we can get like a bit of an atmospheric look. So we can bring up the intensity. If we bring down the threshold, we can see we've got this glow. And one final thing to do um, with the bloom checked on, if you want to uh, play with that to get something to get a look you're happy with, um, you can, of course, increase the brightness of this light at the end. So if we go to the keyframe and then we can increase its brightness. I'll get a nicer kind of glow. And then we could also add a bit more geometry to our um, logo. So obviously that, that could have been a bit thin. Too bad there. And now we've got our final animation. This file is going to be included on the Patreon, so if you want to get the project file to kind of look of what I've done, and you can get that. The link for that is below. And if you like this video, make sure you can give it a thumbs up. That would be really helpful for the channel. Subscribe if you want to see more content, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.